Hello everybody, it is Eternus from Empires and Puzzles And guess what, today I'm here to talk to you about costumes Costumes, costumes, costumes Man, costume has been in the game since November the 19th A lot of people got questions about costumes And I'm here to answer some of those questions Give you pretty much everything you need to know about costumes By all of the maths and the numbers and all of this That most people don't care about anyways So, what is a costume? Well, EMP says that costumes are a way for you, uh, well, a new way to change the way you play your favorite heroes. That's true. They got that right. Yay. All right. So what does that mean? Essentially, there's only one way to potentially get a costume. Right now, there's no way to get a costume because EMP pulled costumes from rotation. Uh, you can go to the forums and read up all about that. But right now, let's discuss costumes for those who are interested and those who already have them. Um, so as a start, you get costumes from the costume summoning gate or the costume chamber. And you need keys. I ain't finna get into all of that. I'm sure everybody played that event. But there are three rarities of costumes, just like there are three rarities of heroes. Rare, epic, and legendary. Um, in total... There are 20 costumes in the game to date. We don't know who else is going to get costumes, but we know that there are 20. And we'll go through all of them and discuss the pros and the cons. But right up the front, the first thing you need to know about costumes, like I said, is that in order to use a costume hero, you must have the original hero. What's that look like? Let's go into the inventory here, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So... All right, boom, here's a prime example. This is regards costume. I have a maxed out, but in order for me to fully max out this car and actually use this car, level it up and all of that, I need to have, well, you know, the guy you all familiar with, regard 1.0, okay? I need to have him in order to use him, the Dapper Noble or whatever they call him. Anyways, he's pretty cool. So, what's the important um, benefit to having a costume and leveling it up? The number one, if you're asking me, the number one important benefit to having a costume and leveling that costume up is that you get access to these nifty things called costume bonuses. I love costume bonuses. It takes a old, weakened old hero like Regard. Regard fully ascended and at max only has 1,166 health. He only has 673 defense and 595 attack well that's not bad for a four star but it's not fantastic especially in a game that's constantly involving when you start talking about emblems and different things like that so when you look at regard with this costume bonus he gets five percent attack five percent defense five uh ten percent health and five percent mana so as you can see his stats are fundamentally different from og regard without the costume which has again 595 attack 673 defense and 1166 health okay all of that is from that so when you level up new regard old regard retains the stat bonuses he old regard retains it you have to fully ascend it to get all of the tiers and each tier is correlated by each chevron so when you first start leveling up new regard at the first chevron you will not get a bonus it is until you max out that first chevron and ascend him to two where you will get the bonus and the bonus is changed from one percent all the way up to five percent so forth and so on but again you retain the costume bonus on the original hero additionally the new hero gets the bonuses too that means new regard, old regard, it don't matter. Both of them get a bonus to their stats. Incidentally, I don't think you can see the base stats for new regard because as you're leveling him up, the costume bonus is automatically being applied. So you, I guess you can never really see what his base stats would be without it, but I would imagine that they're pretty similar to old school regard. So that's the first thing that you should know about that. And that's the single most important thing to me. However, the next important thing that you need to know about the costume is that for all intents and purposes, this is a brand new hero. I mean, 
Yeah, he look a little bit to regard. His name is regard. Da 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 da. But they specials is fundamentally different. Old regard recovers 42% health for all allies. Average speed dispels status ailments from all allies. New regard. All allies regenerate 608, 609 HP over three turns. They get a plus 48% attack for three turns, and they dispels off of allies. Man, this this is awesome. I fucking love uh, new regard. Now, another notable notable difference between the two. If you look here, old regard is a cleric. Okay, he's a cleric, so he gets access to mana shield, blase, blase, blah, which protects him from you know mana negative mana effects and all that other stuff. However, new regard is no longer a cleric. He is a ranger. Okay, which means that he gets access to the ranger talent. Now. Another question that people have is, is how do you emblem up your costume hero? Because when you click on the talent grid for your costume hero, as you can see, everything's grayed out. You can't do jack and diddly squat with it. It's like, what the fuck? They jipped me. Wrong, wrong, wrong. They should have better documented this. So I'm here to tell you, in order to emblem up the costumed hero, you must first go to the original hero. Click on talent grid and emblem them up from the original side, which means, unfortunately, some of y'all not going to like this. I don't like this. It's the way it is. They're looking into changing it. Until that happens, OG regards a cleric. In order to emblem up new regard, you have to actually use talent grids from the old regard using cleric emblems, which means when you look at this path, see here, I want to learn. Mana Shield. I'm not going to use my emblems. Oh, I'm sorry. Nope. Not doing it. But I can learn this. I learned it on the original character and it magically highlights on the new character. Which means that you need to be watching that pathing on the original card. So if you want, let's say, the attack bonus, you have to choose go over here the health bonus <laughs> um, on the original card. Okay, you have to choose the health bonus in order to get the attack bonus on the new card. I know it's a bit confusing. Let's let's simplify it. Again, to run it down again, in order to emblem up the new costumed hero, you must first switch to the old hero, click on the talent grid button, and use whatever their original class was, which for regard is a cleric. So I would use my 75 cleric emblems. I would select that. I'd learn it. The next one, I'd learn health if I wanted to actually take the attack buff for him on the ranger side. They're looking into changing it again. Get over it. It's just the way it works. It's just that simple. And it's just the way it is. There's nothing to explain about that. All right. Now, here's the other thing um, that I love about these heroes man like they change the dynamics of the way you play like like a lot um, I may do some videos where I'm actually playing with them um, but for in the meantime let's actually go through and look at all of the new costumes that are out there because there are 20 it's a lot um, let's switch screens here and we'll go over here alright so as a start we have Vivica alright Vivica man alright <laughs> Vivica, man, she, she got a lot of hate, but her costume, man, makes her, like, much better. I've heard it said that she is the Ghetto Kunchen. I don't know if I agree with that just because she got a defense down. I mean, whatever. She's awesome. What happened? So, old school Vivica on the right. Old school Vivica has 1,300 health, damn near 700 defense, and just over 700 attack. However, new Vivica has 5% to everything except for health, which is 10%. So 10% more health gives her 1475. 5% defense gives her 735. And 5% attack gives her 741. Okay. This is without embleming. Okay. So the costume bonuses beats your hero up all without embleming. That's great because Vivica was kind of squishy. And you emblem her up, she still wasn't as good as other heroes. So that is one of the benefits of the, the costume as it relates to Vivica. 
Now, I won't lie, I kind of sort of don't like her class change, but it can't be helped. New costume, new class, it's just the way it is. You got to get over it. It's just the way it is. If you don't like it, use old school Vivica, which honestly, a lot of people may flame me for this, but I prefer old school Vivica with the bonus to costume stats because let's just be real here. Old school Vivica was like great, except she was slow. And being slow, you couldn't really justify like those low, low stats. But old school Vivica with new school stats, old school special going to survive a little bit better. So you got to think about that. Yeah, you might want that minus 44% defense, but who the fuck wants a slow ass defense buff? I don't personally. There are just so many faster characters out there that do the exact same thing that I can't really justify putting Vivica in that role. But again, I digress because you got to use the card your way. I'm just here to explain to you what shit is. Um, so next, all right, next up we have June. Man, listen, June. I fucking love new June. Okay, so, you know, in the sniper tree, there's hierarchies. And Liana stood at the top of the food chain and green and overall for the for the longest time. I don't know man. It's close though because June is a fucking disaster. These are fucking monsters what he is. June. So first of all, he looked like Fang Wei from Tekken. <laughs> if you play the game then you'll know what I'm talking about. So June man, let's see man. June. Old school June on the left. Old school June at Max gets 1339 health, 636 defense, and 749 attack. His special hits 468% of his attack to the target and minus 40% accuracy. Boom. He's a great sniper, man. But he was running neck and neck with Poseidon. He's becoming dated as new and new characters come in. Enter in his costume. Okay. OMG Jones. So. Fast forward, i tell you this story. When I was raiding against New June, that motherfucker one-shot at my whole team of mono reds. Okay? He was like, pew, 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 just blowing shit up. I was like, the fuck? I had to look. And I realized this motherfucker had like 782 attack, a little bit beefy on the defense, and a lot more health. Okay? But then, on top of that, his special now does 488% of his attack stat. Okay, now they did lower his accuracy to Drake level. Who gives a fuck when you one shot motherfuckers, anyways? I mean, let's be real here. With OG June, you hit them, they gonna either be dead most of the time, anyways, by the time you really find June. So the miss is like, whatever. New school June is straight put motherfuckers in the ground, like, pff, bow, dead. Okay, so it's great. Now remember. Old school June will get the costume bonus if you choose to just use old school June as you've maxed out his costume. Either way is good, but me personally, I'm using new June because his class also changed. And I like new school June's talent better than old school. Old school was a bump. And it was cool because he could resist a lot of the status effects at a chance that was getting thrown at him. But... New June, which is a sniper, I think that the fighter class is more appropriate for a sniper. Because, let's just say, paint you a picture. New School June, he's a fighter, he's out there on the board. He getting ready to fire. You got to take him out. Okay, boom. You take him out, he specialed up. Guess what, he's a fighter. He revives and punches you in the stomach. Like, what the fuck? That's awesome for a sniper. So, it's awesome. New School Goon. He gonna have the costume bonus too. They retain the costume bonuses across the car, so it don't really matter. All right, who's next? Who we got next here? All right, let's see. Man, let's take. All right, Quintus. <sighs> Quintus, Quintus, man. Uh, so Eternity, she's sitting right with me, and she got Quintus. It was like one of her first five stars, man. You should have seen that she was like a, a giddy stepchild. She was like, yay, I have a Quintus. <laughs> and you know me, the 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 boyfriend that's like, you know, trying to be all supportive and shit. <laughs> I'm like, yay. Great you, you card. Got Quintus is like really fucking awesome. <laughs> you leveled up, man. 
so you, you you leveled up for real. You went from motherfucking Cheshire Cat <laughs> to Quintus. Yes, you know I, I don't like Quintus, man. Like I, Quintus is good if you got it. First of all, let me stop hating on Quintus. Quintus is good. First of all, for what and what he does, he's slow. But if you look at all of the slow cards out there, da da da. da Quintus, man, when he throw them purple lightnings on you, man, it it ain't fun. Okay, two hundred and seventy percent damage to all enemies if he fire. All right, but the only thing is, man, I just don't like slow motherfuckers with squishy ass stats. So enter in Quintus two point oh, eight hundred and fucking four tau damage. Okay, wow, six hundred and sixty three. Defense and 1472 health. If you chose to emblem this Quintus up with that costume bonus, man, he'd be a beast. He definitely have more survivability, more tile damage, which for me, that's important. For some of y'all, it's about the specials. For me, it's all about the tax, the attack, the tax stat, the tiles. Um, but then his special changes. So he takes a damage reduction on his special. So instead of dealing 235% damage to I'm sorry, 270% damage to all enemies. He does 235. I personally don't like that. However, as in a secondary effect, which he does a minus 34% attack for four turns, you don't see that in purple. So if you need that special in the purple set, well, Quintus has it. And the tile damage is on point, man. So, yeah, there it is, Quintus, man. His costume look almost a damn same to me, by the way, but whatever, I digress. Who's next? We got Elena. Oh. Oh, poor Elena. So let me let me start here. I absolutely don't I'm gonna say it again. I don't like the way her new costume looks. I don't. Like she looks real she she looks like she can't even breathe in this damn thing. Look, she don't got no fucking neck. Like, what the fuck? I mean, she don't look a little stuffy before, but she still look derpy. I don't know. Anyways, on, on to the card. So, Alina, man. Alina was like beast previously. If you're talking about her tax there, man. 809. Golly. Them tiles, if you're using her offense, her tiles is off the chart. But, unfortunately, poor Alina, she, she got like virtually no defense. And you can tell. Look at the clothes she wearing. You can see her stomach. <laughs> And shit. She got like no defense. Maybe that's why she put that other, that's outfit, why she put on the other outfit on. But whatever. It still looked derpy. Anyways, 578 defense, 1312 health. Deals 202. But y'all familiar with OG Alina? New school. She changed from a fighter to a rogue. And that was probably the best thing that they could have ever done for Alina. Because Alina's slow and she's squishy. And yeah. There it is. But being a rogue, she gets access to evade. You know, I'm known for sniping at Lena's, man. I'm known for underestimating her ass, too. But we ain't going to talk about that. Anywho, so she gets access to the rogue um, talent, which gives her more survivability, which increases her dodge or whatever, 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 and increases the chances that she's going to actually fire that special. And all you really need is for Alina to fire once, really. That's what slow characters do, man. They're supposed to do something so fundamentally good. They fire once. Even if they die, that lingering effect is supposed to be a game changer. Whatever. Anyways, though, so she gets a boost to her shit. I don't like Alina, so we're going to move on. I can go look at her later on. <laughs> I, don't like, I don't like Alina. She killed me in that raid video. All right, Liana. Yeah, I'm better. Liana, yo. Okay. First, first. Liana's costume is fucking ugly to me. She looked like the rainbow candy lady. But, oh, fuck, cuz, like, y'all, so Liana, Liana was, like, supposed to be the damage queen. She did nothing but fucking damage. And for the longest time, she was it. Then they start introducing all these heroes of the month, all these other characters. And just other characters that just, you prefer to take them over Liana. Because, I mean, first of all, look at Liana's stats. 729, 718, 1248. Those are pretty mediocre stats for the new game. But you look at that 512 damage, it's like, fuck. But, Liana 2.0. Okay, so as a start, I liked her Ranger class. 
And I'm not really sure why they decided to make her a cleric. Maybe to create emblem conflicts when they actually fix embleming up costumes. I don't know. But anywho though, so she gets a massive stat boost. Like she needed that stat boost. 773 fucking attack. Okay. 745 and 1364. With 480% on her special. Okay. 482% of 773. And a secondary effect. The target gets minus 34% mana generation for three turns. <sighs> That's what I was about to say. Like. Assuming they still alive, they gonna get hit with a mana a mana nerve. Cause Liana about to bust him in the face with a fucking bazooka. Like that's insane. Liana 2.0 is amazing. If you don't have her, pull for her with costumes come back. If you do have her, say thank you to the RNG gods because she's now a monster again. And honestly, with her costume being out. I have a little bit of a regret because I ascended Kingston first because at the time Kingston was better. But now I'm on the fence because her stats are just insane. Her damage is insane. And I'd rather have you dead than doing less damage. If you dead, you ain't doing no damage. Uh, but I digress. Next. What we got here? We have... Survey says Richard. Okay. All right. So... I fucking hated Richard for like the longest time and it, didn't, it was not like I didn't think Richard was you know okay or good or whatever it's just look at OG Richard man he looked like a complete derp like <laughs> he, look, he just looked derpy as fuck to me man he looked like a old ass drunk high ass World of Warcraft character like just straight, straight stepped out a beta from World of Warcraft it's just what the fuck? Okay. Anyways, and new Richard look cool as fuck. Like he look cool as fuck. He look less derpy. You know he got the old scraggly, ain't shaved all your beard and shit. But he, he look cool as fuck. Been they been through some <laughs> shit. Listen, Liana left him and he ain't been the same since. <laughs> Anywho, though, I like the fact that he's a barbarian. I love that his class changed. Um. From OG from Paladin, which I actually liked them on Paladin, but I ain't mad at Barbarian because they made him a monster. Like they are making blue tanks viable again with the stat crease. Okay, so costumed Richard gets 682 attack. 800 fucking you seen that shit right? 862 defense. Oof is all I can say. 1361 health. Deals 435% damage to the target and minor damage to enemies. And he still keeps his attack nerf. Except they reduced it to four turns. But I look at this as a straight buff across the board. None of Nothing about this is bad. So if you had Richard and you had him leveled up, thank the RNG gods. Level up his costume and don't look bad because he is fucking amazing. Like really, really good. Okay. Next, let's see who we got here. Mm. Do, do, do. Ah, Asania. Okay. Oh, gosh. All right, Asania. So, first of all, I just got to say, her costume makes her look stoned to death. She did so much methamphetamines, her skin turned blue, and her <laughs> eyes don't got no life. She got them dead eyes. I digress, because the costume actually looked pretty cool on the field and in the car portrait, but I like the old school one better. Look at this. Classic. She classic, man. Like, woof. She regal looking like, hey. I will, I will take her home to meet my mama. The new one, I want to take her home. My mama will be like, who the fuck is that bitch? I will not take new Asania home to meet my mama. But I'll take Asania 1.0 home to meet mama. Anywho. But they made her good. So old school is on the right this time. New school on the left. So wizard on the right. Sorcerer on the left. Okay. Now, she did get a buff. Uh, she got a buff because her attack stat, 869. When in, if Sonia's tiles are going to hit you, and you're going to make, they listen, they're going to make you wish you had to let it go like they did in Frozen or whatever. Like, I'm just saying, that's 869 motherfucking tile damage, okay? 
So on the offense team, amazing. They gave her a small defense buff. <laughs> and, and a small health buff um, but she got a damage buff that's the most important thing 255% 255% damage instead of 235% now in order to get that she did lose some of that defense buff but let's just be real here let's just be real here she slow okay so I would rather her do more damage than do more of a defense buff to be completely honest with you and she hits all and she gets access to sorcerer now which means she gets access to delay which is always good I love delay I love it better than that stupid jinx shit from the wizard anyways it's just dumb um, but again she keeps the stat buff so I mean you just can't beat that she keeps the stat buffs from the costume bonus so whether you use old school Liana a new school Liana is beneficial to level up that costume just to get that stat bonus. Next. Who's next? Alright. <sighs> okay. So I quite literally do not know what the fuck they was thinking with Horror Hall's costume. Like I I ain't like the old school Horror Hall costume, but I like the old one better than the new one. Cause he looked like he need a sander is what he need not a sandwich a sander look they done broke this motherfucker he looked like one of them broken toys from Toy Story 2 you know when they when they put the toys in the box on the side of the road and shit and the kids are looking out sad that what he looked like one of them more fucked up broke their toys okay uh, whatever let's get over it okay so he was a druid before and now he's a ranger he got a stat boost which I like so across the board stat boost he had the highest health in the game before he retains that as Horg Hall 2.0 higher defense which he need because he's slow higher attack stat but again in the same vein that they did a Sarnia they lowered his attack damage um, from a special to 215% and increased um, the, the um, damage down I don't know if that was good for him or not because there's just so many characters in the game that do attack down faster than he does. But the interesting thing about Horror Call and he's a ranger now. So he hits all where all it is. He has a chance to bypass defensive buffs. I mean, that's pretty cool. But I ain't a fan. I mean, if you got Hog Hall, level him up because he, he's a good character. He's better than what he was in, in a lot of ways. Definitely more sturdy. The health is insane, but I ain't a fan of Horg Hall. I never been a fan of Horg Hall. I got like 50 Horg Halls, and I can't wait till the Hero Academy comes so I can train them into Dawas. Because I would rather have a Dawa over Horg Hall. That's just me, but I ain't saying he bad. I just personally don't like Horg Hall. All right, who's next? All right, who's next? Who's next? Man. Regard. Okay. <laughs> Shit. Now. Now we're cooking with Crisco. Now I'll tell you. So, Regard is quite literally, if he ain't my favorite costume hero, he's my second favorite. So, old school Regard, in my opinion, I don't believe in must have heroes except for one, and that's Regard. Because he heals and he dispels. That's going to help you throughout every facet of the game. As long as you're playing this game, Regard is going to always be useful. And he got a level up. Level up, level up, level up, level up. He leveled up. First of all, his outfit leveled up. Because let's just be real here. What the fuck was he wearing before? But what he wearing now, I actually got that outfit in my closet. Don't hate. <laughs> Purple rain. Anywho. <laughs> He got a stat boost, man, like off the board. No emblems. Like, look at this. On the left, Regard 2.0. No emblems. Regard got 1271 health, 702 defense, 633 attack. Old school Regard. Okay. This Regard with 20 emblems. Oh, yo, so eternity over here oogling after this Regard with 20 emblems. This ain't even the point of the motherfucking video. <laughs> She showed me some shit. Not even relevant. What we talking about? Anywho. <laughs> 20 emblems over here. Y'all can't see it, but emblem them up, you'll see. 20 emblems, 1379 health, 738 defense, and 741 fucking attack. Five star status. Bye. Emblem up regard because I'm jelly. Mm -hmm. 
Alright, so the special he had before was awesome. 42% health and dispel status ailments. On the left, oh my god, I'm gonna be honest with you. There are times when that massive heal is awesome, but then there are times when you kind of sort of need that Regan. I personally find the Regan more useful, even though it can be dispelled. On the offense team is a hell of a lot more useful. Man, let me say. All allies regenerate 609 HP over three turns. That's fast healing. All allies get plus 48% attack for three turns and dispel status ailments from all allies. Effectively, regard killed Boltus. I'm kidding. Boltus, Boltus is still very, very, very valuable. Um, and no said, he retained the costume bonuses on his new form and he got really good stats, which makes him viable in new content. I love New Regard. He is so much more versatile than what he ever was before. If you need to heal, he got it. If you need to spell, he got it. If you need to do some damage really, really quickly, he got it. He got it all. The complete package. If you ain't leveled up Regard's costume, there's something fucking wrong with you. Like, for real, for real, for real. Level it up ASAP. All right, next. Who we got next? Survey says... New Melendor! There he is. All right. So, Dumbledore. <laughs> Listen. All right, all, right, all right. So, me and Melendor have always had a hate hate relationship. Now, we got a love-hate relationship. Old school Melendor was pretty cool. He had a lot of tile damage. 714, 586 defense, which means old school Melendor was squishy as fuck with our emblems and a thousand health. I mean, come on. How was y'all keeping him alive? Now, massive heal, man. 42% health to all allies and dispel buffs from enemies. Man, he was a very good card to bring. New Melendor, on the other hand, is God's gift to the world. Okay? New Melendor, first of all, he's a fucking wizard now. Okay? Like, he looked like a wizard before, but he was some kind of a druid, and he looked dirty and ashy. But New Melendor ascended. Like, he's awesome. Now, he takes a hit to his tile damage. But let's just be real here. Who gives a fuck when you look at that special? He takes a massive increase to defense, which means that he's not so squishy anymore, and he got more health. So I think it's a nice trade-off for a card that really ain't there to do damage anyways. It's a great uh, trade-off. But this special, though, all allies, just like Regard, regenerate 609 HP over three turns. Now here's the differentiating factor. Melendor gives a plus 46% defense for three turns and dispels buffs from all enemies. Okay, so remember when we looked at Viv? In my opinion, I'm thinking that Melendor 2.0 puts Vivica to shame because he does what, essentially what Vivica 1.0 does better because he does it at average speed. Emblem that motherfucker up and you got the green Vivica. In my opinion, anyways. Um, and the wizard. Now, I don't really understand the wizard class. Because at the end of the damn day, you're not really bringing Melendor for damage. So, I'm thinking that he probably is not going to be able to utilize that attack buff as well as certain others. But who cares? The car is amazing. And again, the costume bonus, as you can see here, boosts those stats. And even, let's just say, you decide to not use new Melendor for some reason. I don't know why you wouldn't, but let's say you didn't. Old school Melendor, even though you can't see it here with him maxed out, old school Melendor gets a bonus to all of his stats when you max out the costume. So he keeps that. So he's even better um, from a stat standpoint. Next, who we got here? I don't think I'm going to cover all of them, guys, because the video is getting pretty long. Um, but I'm going to cover most of most of the ones that we care about. Oh, man, Sonya. All right. I got to cover Sonya. I got to. Um, because I... So, early, in my early days of the game, I needed a faster speller. And it came down to a decision between Sonya and Kate Mine. And I ultimately chose Sonya because she just had better overall stats. She just had more survivability than Kate Mine. While Kate Mine certainly does a little bit more damage than Sonya, Sonya's survivability with her defensive stats for a four stars is unprecedented. It's unparalleled. Okay. Old school Sonya got 731 defense right off the rip. 
a thousand health and 607 tile damage and this is just the spells buff off enemies does a little bit of damage I like old school Sonya she was a paladin which means she could self buff her defense now she's a druid I'm not mad at that because it's just another way to boost her defense it's just done indirectly through that little minion okay but new school Sonya stats is insane for a four star she gets 646 tile damage or attack stat, 762 defense, 1103 health. Now, keep in mind, if you have Sonya maxed out and then you max out her costume, old school Sonya stats is going to be higher than what we see displayed here. They're going to be similar to what her costume actually gets. I just have not actually uh, reflected that here. But remember, her stats are going to be better. Okay, but, okay, new school Sonya. Druid, I like the class change. I'm not mad either way because they're essentially doing the same thing, protecting from damage. However, um, I, I find the secondary effect on new school Sonya very, 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 very situational. Much, I find myself in a situation much less frequent that I would need to dispel on myself then I do need the dispel on others since she's blue. And a lot of times I'm bringing her on my mono blue team, which means that I'm going up against, well, you know, reds. And a lot of reds ain't really putting no status effects on you like that. They really buffing themselves up. Like Zimkitha, who's going to give the attack up and dispel off of themselves. And like Grazzle, who's going to buff up. Almost all of the reds that I know don't really put no status effect on you. So if you bring her on a mono stack, then old school Sonya is going to be probably better. I rarely ever use Sonya 2.0. But Sonya 1.0, I love her because she gets that costume bonus. So I raise her stats because I don't have my Sonya emblem at all. So she got better stats without the emblems. Um, your use case may vary. A lot of people call her the blue Zimkitha. She's certainly nowhere near as useful as Zimkitha. But I can see it since she dispelled on allies. And you may find yourself in a situation where you need that. But I don't. Like yeah, like grave makers on teams Marjana. and stuff like that. Marjana. But again, yeah. I would rather her dispel. Yeah. Because a lot of times when you're seeing grave makers or whoever, whoever, again, they ain't putting shit on you. Except grave maker does it in Marjana. Fuck Marjana's doc though. Like who cares? Grave makers is like but I got another solution for grave maker. It's called kill his ass dead. <laughs> <laughs> because at the end of the dang old day, to be honest with you, if you really relying on Sonya to dispel Grave Maker shit off of you, you're probably doing that. something wrong. Yeah. You're probably doing something wrong, anyways. But I digress. Next, next, who we got next? There. Oh man, I right, Lex. <laughs> All right, so I absolutely love the what Lex is the way her costume looks. I just love it. Now, I also love her stat bonus because, you know, the yellow four stars were kind of weak in the stats and weak in the damage. So she got a straight up buff across the board, except they reduced her mana cut in half by 10%. It's moot, though, because at the end of the dang on date, at 20% or at 10%, you really at most only delaying the enemy by one turn either way. So give me the damage buff and the stat increase all day long. And she's a rogue, which... I like for her. I actually do. Because at the end of the dang on day, when them snipers is coming, she can dodge with a fan. She pulling the motherfucking derp on them. She doing the matrix bullet time on them. Like, ah, you can't hit me. My name is Lee X. I ain't. Anyways, she's an amazing card. I actually have her, but I have not started working on her. But I will say this, though. I have Neath. And I can guarantee you that I'm going to level up Lee X before I level up Neath because I don't care about the accuracy nerf on Neath and all I really care about is the damage to all the better stats the easier to level up and max out card and I still get mana cut so yeah anyways my two cents next speaking of easy did mm -hmm. you mention how much easier it is and how much faster it is to actually level up the costume Oh, yeah. We'll talk about that when we get through there because I'm going to go through there. And then okay. All right, Boltus. All right. So, I don't like Boltus costume, but I ain't like old school Boltus either. I'm probably like one of the few people that just maxed out a Boltus like a fucking couple of days ago. 
Bolter just never really was my thing. I don't. I did not consider he, him a healer. Only healing for twenty seven percent damage. He's more like a utility guy. He definitely got some tanky stats, and they just got tankier. I old school Boltus is a fighter. I actually liked him as a fighter because he could revive, and if he died with that special matched up, he revived, he buffs, he heals a little bit. Da 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 da. He's now a monk, but he's more tankier. So those of you using Boltus tanks out there, he just got tankier. Man, look here. You should get the shelf. Okay, let him give you the war feast. He gives you more health, 37% health, at the expense of losing 18% attack buff. I think it's a fair trade-off for what he gets. 621 attack, 736 defense, 1230 health. I mean, awesome. Now, that's going to be more. On the left is new school. On the right, old school. Either way, with the costume bonuses on old school, it's actually going to be more than what we see reflected here. Because they retain the bonuses from the costume. I keep saying that because it's important. They retain the bonuses from the costume. At the end of this video, that's going to be ingrained in your head. All right, next. Who we got next here? All right, who we see here? We got... <sighs> okay, so Skittle Skulls. I got, I got a special relationship with Skittles. Uh, she was my... If all y'all didn't know, Skittle Skulls is a girl. She's a bog witch. Blah, 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 yakety smash. She was like my very first four-star when I first started playing the game. And I absolutely love Skittle Skulls itself. That fucking wrangly-looking bitch used to get me killed all the damn time because she's slow, man. And when you ain't got that many cards and you're trying to rely, you're trying to get these specials off, blah, 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 blah. Skittle Skulls wasn't cutting it, man. Um, Whatever, I... Skittle Skulls is alright. If you like Skittle Skulls, she got great tile damage. She got decent defense. Her health was shit. OG style. New school, shit. Off the chain. New school Skittle Skull is got stupid fucking tile damage. 778 tile damage. That's insane. You can't only, you only ever see that in the damn 5 star. She essentially like 5 star status. She's still slow as fuck though. Uh, anywho though, so, um, her class changed from a sorcerer, which I like, to a cleric, which I don't really understand. But whatever, if you get it, like, let me know in the comments why you think cleric was a good choice for her. The costume was horrendous, man. Old school Skittle Skull that look at least looked a little bit menacing. New school Skittle Skull looked deranged as fuck. Looked like she just straight went ham on whoever owned the candy shop on the corner. Like, that bitch was like, hey, give me all the gummy bears and all the peppermints. And then she threw a cupcake on me. I know, right? She threw, <laughs> and then threw up a cupcake all over Liana's costume. That's why Liana's costume look a motherfucking mess. Skittle Skull is jealous of Liana's hotness. And anyways, though, man, the costumes is great, man. They all great. So Skittle Skull gets a little bit of a special nerf and a buff at the same time so less damage from the special per se and more minus attack whatever the stats is what's important with this card nothing more nothing less next all right who we got here who we got coming up next ah uh -huh, tybertus the king of rock all right so old school tybertus was pretty good new school tybertus is even better so he's very versatile so as a start more stats from the costume on both sides of the fence old school tybertus was a ranger new school tybertus is a paladin really it looks like to me that they promised him to be a four-star tank if you need if you got like a low level tank you low level raid and shit like that he could be a tank with this he really could i mean that's the way i see him but I don't use him as a tank. I use I used to use him on my mono purple team when I got his costume because he did that defense down on all, which is like really awesome. So if you got a character that hits more than one on your purple team or whatever, then new school Tybertus is like amazing. The minus 34% defense he kept, but he puts that on all of them instead of just three. Now he took a slight damage nerf and buff. Why do I say that? Well, he did 295% damage to the target and minor damage to nearby enemies, old school. But new school hits everybody for 175. I consider that a damage buff when you consider that he has 688 attack, 675 defense, and 1100 health. New school Ty Bird is awesome. If you don't have him leveled up, 
Level them up. Put them on your primary or your secondary mono purple team. If you cheap to play or free to play, put him on your defense team. He's a fucking amazing and he's a paladin now, which will proc that skill that allows him to boost his defense up even more. Next. All right. Who we got? Who we got? We got Brianna. All right. I love Brianna. God, I love Brianna's new special. She is like the three-star Athena, except she's better than Athena at three-star. She hits all enemies. New school on the right. All enemies get minus 41% defense and a further minus 4% decrease every time they are hit. Man, listen. I was leveling my three stars. I got a couple of Brianna's. I'm about to level them up, max out. And she's a cleric, which for some reason I kind of like for her. Because at the end of the damn day, y'all know damn well they're going to be trying to cut her mana or stop her from firing because that's just really good in a three star she got a stat buff all the way across the board I like this defense down more than I like that attack up because in my opinion minus defense is much better than plus attack enough said uh huh who's next this is going to be my last one as far as like breaking them down because at the end of the day go, oh Hawk Moon man I love Hawk Moon who, who, who hate Hawk Moon when they pull it? Everybody raise your hand if you hate fucking Hawk Moon when you pull it. You That's pull it and you get this derpy looking bitch. Look at her face. She look like she don't even know. She be like, hey, what? Y'all want me to do what? what? Y'all go, go and fight. No, you, you don't understand. I don't fight. I'm a healer. Okay? Wait, what? But new school Hawk Moon still look just as derpy in the face. However, <laughs> however, that win gospel though, bruh, that shit the truth. She does Regan. And she does plus attack. She be, she Aries daughter. She like Aries baby baby girl. Okay. Yeah, she like Aries granddaughter. Because she she and but but she better than daddy or granddaddy cause she do it to everybody. I mean she puts the buff on everybody. She's a sorcerer. Uh I would have preferred her stay a cleric, but whatever. You can't win them all. Alright, let's see here. I ain't going to go through them all. That's the gist of it. So it's a quick rundown. Just to cover because we went through these heroes and we talked about a lot of stuff. It's a quick rundown in order to um, use a costume. You got to have the original hero. All right. In addition to that, you need to level up the costume independently of the original hero. And let's talk about that as a final point. To level up the costume, you need more stuff. Um, so for three stars and four stars, it's essentially easy. Three stars is easy. All you really need is hams and stuff that you can come by all day long. Four stars, you can ascend them all the way up to three, which is hams and stuff that you should have in abundance. But when you get to that fourth ascension, you're going to need a three-star non-farmable, which basically means in the case of regard, in order to get his costume to final ascension, I will need ham, some other stuff, and a um, trap tool. One trap tool. With a five star to send them to final, you will need three um, non-farmable three star ascension materials. So in the case of June, to get him to final ascension, you would need three um, orbs of magic. A lot of people scream bloody murder about this, but remember what I said in the middle, in the beginning of the video. It's as if you're getting an entirely new card for all intents and purposes. Yeah, I guess the OG card you already had in your inventory, but you had to pull for the costume. But let's be real. There is such a huge difference between the OG version and the new school version of it that really you're getting a free hero except you had to pull for the costume. So, at the end of the day, on day, for me, I gladly paid that price. You know, three time, um, three, three, three star non farmables. Man, I gladly paid that price. I paid the price on my four stars, and I'm going to willingly and happily pay that price on my five stars because they are that good. They are that good. So, if you bitching and griping about having to spend the essential materials, don't. Because at the end of the dang on day, you playing the game like I do. We all invest or we don't. But at the end of the dang on day, it's a small price to pay for more utility. Okay. A lot more versatility. And 
to potentially update your car so that they can hang with new content. Um, this video getting kind of long, guys. So we will do a part two to kind of sort of wrap things up. Um, but if you like this and if you want to see me discuss something else, hit me up in the con in the comments, man. Oh, and I hate to start doing it, but man, if you like the content that I'm putting out, please smash the like button and subscribe so that I can know that you're interested and keep making content that's going to be beneficial to your play. All right, it turns out.